<laughs> Women, in my opinion, have lost their motherfucking mind. <laughs> like, ever since they've gotten freedom to do things, and their freedom comes from wicked people. Trust me. All the things you're able to do, wicked people enabled you to do it. So you can destroy your neighborhoods and everything. I'm talking to almost, I'm talking to all women of the Western world here in America. Your freedom has destroyed not only your neighborhoods, not only the family, you have destroyed you. And because I'm saying like, if you look at child support, um, the way people alter their bodies and all this shit, this is all because women have freedom. I'm telling you the best, the best women in the world is a woman who has followed and got direction from a man. All women that's raised by women are destroyers of the world. <laughs> all women raised by women are destroyers of the world. You can research this all you want. The best, most quality women are the women who have been given the information the game, whatever you want to call it, by a man in their life. Did anybody disagree with that? Shalom. Call Laimla, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor. To the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Citations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, remember Lot's wife. So I want to talk briefly about what that means and go into why Yahweh Shai said that. And the short answer is our most of our women are in their flesh. They're living the the good life, so to speak. And that's talking about this high quality lifestyle in a a superpower of the United States being the daughter of Babylon. So that pampering effect and what the Bible says, the vintage shall fail. So this society is prophesied to collapse. And many of our women are, are stuck in that lavish, high quality pampering stage. And there is a, an illusion that this type of society is going to continue forever. But we know that based on the prophecies, it's circling the drain. It's on a downward spiral. So Lot's wife was, she was just stuck in the good life, that high quality of life she was living under Lot. And Lot had great wealth and riches. So she was not willing to give that up. She was okay with continuing in a wicked society. Why? Because she was getting the goodies. She was able to indulge in a high quality lifestyle. So she was really not affected with the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah. As long as she was able to get all of the amenities associated with living the good life. <clears throat> so what the wicked global elite have done, they have tapped into the feminine energy here in America in order to stay in power and to eliminate the masculine aggressive male. So they have subdued the alpha male here in this society. And they have promoted this feminist and women's liberation mindset. There were some interesting stats that I looked at recently. <clears throat> and what I found out is the 
probability of a young daughter or a young son staying in a home and becoming successful is just as equal to both parents raising the children in the household. The single father had the same high level probability of a successful raising a successful child. And I thought that was quite interesting. Interesting. <coughs> anyway, I'm gonna go into there's another video that I want to show. And then I'm gonna go into the lesson. Let's continue. Follow the life and teachings of Christ and you practice magic just as Christ did. I can tell you that Christ was a, necrom a necromancer. What is a necromancer? A person who speaks to the dead. I can tell you that Christ was a sorcerer. What is a sorcerer? A person who consorts with spirits. We have all through the Bible how Jesus talked. How many spirits did Jesus talk to? I can tell you without a doubt that Christ was a psychic, knew what was going to happen before it happened. I can tell you without a doubt that Christ was a medium. Why? Because he could commune with people and spirits that were dead. If you believe the transmutation, the transfiguration, not the transmutation, the transfiguration where he met with Moses and Elijah on the mountaintop. I don't know how you can escape the fact that many things Jesus did look quite witchy, necromantic, sorcery, sorcerish <laughs> to me. Look at it. And look at it with fresh eyes, not with the eyes that you were taught to look at things. I love you. Valerie Love, ChristianWitches.com. Wow. ChristianWitches.com. That's from Elder Manatazak's page. So this is why the wicked have done this. There's a video circulating the internet that the Rothschilds created and pushed the feminist agenda. Number one, they wanted to tax both husband and wife. And they wanted to ultimately split up the families and break down the basic building blocks of the society, which is the family unit structure, the family unit. Let's go here first. Who's making these decisions? Let's go to Job chapter 9. <clears throat> Verse 24, book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So the head of the household and the judges are the sons of Jacob, the Israelites, the Bible says that the sons of Jacob are gods on the earth, pursuant to Psalms chapter 82, and are the up-and-coming kings and priests, pursuant to Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, and Revelation chapter 1. So what the global elite did, they knew that the resurrection of the tabernacle of David is built upon a strong patriarch of noble kings and priests. So what they did was create a new culture where a woman shall compass a man. And they had to create obstacles or stumbling blocks to prevent the sons of Jacob from waking up and assuming their rightful positions. Every ancient empire worshipped goddesses. The ancient Assyrians worshipped Anana. The ancient Greeks, Athena and Aphrodite. The ancient Romans, Diana. The ancient Egyptians, Isis. So forth and so on. So it's designed to subdue or emasculate the dominant male or the alpha male. Let's go here to, <coughs> we're going to go to the book of Sirach, chapter 25. The book of Sirach, chapter 25. Let's go to verse 1. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not full of pleasure. 
Now, yes, this is literal, but there's another spiritual component to this. The allure of the daughter of Babylon. She's decked out with well-lit cities, prosperous cities, Las Vegas, New York. So there is an appeal and a great seductive allure to being sucked into her ways because of how good she looks on the outside. So that beauty is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. So it's tied to lasciviousness. Let's read this again. <clears throat> Stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure. Remember John on the island of Patmos, he did what? He marveled at the great city. And the angel said, why do you marvel? So even John was seduced. Now he literally saw a woman. But that woman represents what? The metropolis, which means mother city which equates to the daughter of Babylon. Let's go to Sirach 25, verse 21. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. A wicked woman abateth the courage, maketh a heavy countenance, and a wounded heart a woman that will not comfort her husband in distress, maketh weak hands and feeble knees. So the Bible says that a woman is supposed to be under the order of her husband, pursuant to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and submissive to him. And the Bible says that a wife is her husband's helpmeet. That's in Genesis chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 3. Not trying to dominate her male, her man. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. And I've gone into this a, quite, quite, I've gone into this a lot, quite frequently. 80% of the divorces are filed by women. So the homes are being broken up by women and they are choosing the flexibility to get abroad. They're choosing the liberty to get abroad and have that flexibility of quote unquote freedom. But in reality, it's not freedom. The Bible says that an idle mind is the devil's workshop. <clears throat> Matter of fact, let's go here. I think it's first Timothy chapter five. See? First Timothy chapter five, verse five. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusteth in God and continueth in supplication and prayers night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. So a woman is not supposed to be gadding abroad and bouncing or riding the cock carousel. She's supposed to stick with one man until he dies or she dies. Let's jump down to verse 14. Let's go to verse 13. And withal, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies speaking things which they ought not. Gossip queens and trumping around from house to house, sp spreading drama, 
for some are already turned aside after Satan. Just like just like just like this woman here. Follow the life and teachings of Christ and you practice magic just as Christ did. I can tell you that Christ was a neck a witch. The Bible is a true book. It's spot on. So the global elites have tapped into placing or displacing the order of the Most High, turning things upside down. And this is one of the reasons why the earth is in disarray. It's operating on a satanic vibration. Let's go here to the book of Job. We're going to talk about Job's wife. When we read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says that a woman's glory is her hair. So there's a significance behind that, and that is she's in the flesh being enticed to amenities, niceties, pedicures, manicures, what do they call it, broided hair, all of the things that enhance her beauty, but not enhancing the morality of the society as a whole, but stuck in the flesh. That's why Lot's wife looked back, because she wasn't she was reminiscing over the high quality lifestyle she lived. <clears throat> Let's go to Job chapter 2, verse 8. Book of Job chapter 2, verse 7. So when Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. See? So what are we reading about? His wife was stuck on the lavishness of life, the vintage the luxuries, the good life, ignoring the will of the Heavenly Father. This is why the Most High made the man the head. How many war stories have you read of 10,000 or more women charging a machine gun nest, running while artillery is landing on top of them? So men have the integrity to protect and defend their household unto death and their nation unto death. So men are built differently, hardwired to fight to the death, to protect our loved ones to the death. So we have a hard wire programming to defend our nation as a whole. There's no such thing of a war being won by a swarm or a multitude of women. Forget that movie, Woman King. That's bugged out. <clears throat> Let's read this again. Job 2 and 9. This is Job's wife talking. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But then he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips? Job, a man of the Lord, 
maintains his integrity. This is how the men are hardwired, the men of the Lord. Now, when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhat, and Zephar and Naamathite, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. So the evil system is taking away the integrity of the men by subduing them under their wives. So they're making an attempt to do that. But the Lord has left a remnant so that we should not be as Sodom and Gomorrah. So that remnant of elect men are pre-programmed and pre-ordained to follow the will of the Heavenly Father and are not going to be swayed. Let's read this. See, we're going to stay in Job. Job 39. Let's go to verse 15. The book of Job, chapter 39, verse 15. Let's go to 14. Which layeth her eggs in the earth and warmeth them in the dust. So this is describing the nature of a woman using a metaphor analogy of an ostrich, a female ostrich. But it's talking about a woman. And forgetteth that the foot may crush them, or that the wild beast may break them, her offspring, aborting her babies. Twenty million so-called Negro babies have been murdered since 1973. That's why the Bible says of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. See, through being liberated, and that liberty is from the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, which starts with his order that the woman is supposed to serve her husband and that the man is the head of the household. So they, give, they have given her liberty to rebel against the will of in order of our Heavenly Father. Job 39, verse 16. She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not here. Well, see, this is heavy. 20 million murdered babies since 1973. Heartless, cold, cruel, and not having to answer to anyone other than herself. Job 39, verse 16. She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without fear. Remember, Job's wife said, curse this God of yours and die. Job 39, verse 17, because God had deprived her of wisdom, neither have he imparted to her understanding. So she, so the woman is not set up to be the head of the household. Neither is she set, set up to usurp authority over the man. <clears throat> So Yahawashai was sending us a message. So the system is using the economy to threaten the lifestyle. Who is connected to the pedicures, the manicures, the long broided hair, the weave, the high life, the amenities, the woman. 
So they are catering to meet the vintage lifestyle of the woman. They're going to push that digital device. Who is relying on WIC, child support, Section 8 housing, government SNAP benefits. See? So the system is created to cater to the needs of a woman. And many of the men are following in that direction under her, the two-third Israelites. This is what Shai was given the warning about, to not fall prey to the temptation of this world. Let's go to Luke 17 and 31. In that, <clears throat> in that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Now he's talking about 40 years from when he was on the earth, 70 AD. So he prophesied the siege of Jerusalem 40 years prior to it occurring. But it's going to happen again in the last days. Luke 17 and 32. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. So they're going to use the buying and selling food, water, groceries, government benefits to cater to the woman's needs to seduce the entire family through her. That's the plan. And push that digital buying and selling and tracking device. The Karagma. This is why Yahushai is given this warning. So they're going to exploit the vulnerabilities of the weaker vessel. Did not the Bible say the woman is the weaker vessel? So every adversary seeks to attack where you're weak. And that's through the woman. That's in 1 Peter chapter 3, that the woman is the weaker vessel. <clears throat> Let's close out here. Let's go to first P no, 2 Peter. The book of 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 18. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity... They allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. So these are the unfaithful. These are those that lack integrity through the lust of the flesh, just like Lot's wife did not want to give up her amenities her luxury lifestyle, her high quality of life. So this is the Achilles heel, which means a vulnerable area of attack or point of attack. Let's go to 2 Peter 2, verse 18 again. 2 Peter 2, verse 18. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought in bondage. Now I've been speaking through the Spirit saying 
that the habitation of sin is bondage. So when I read the scripture again, it reminded me of that saying, that the habitation of sin is bondage through the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. Why you think Lot's wife looked back? Because she was in love with that lifestyle, despite the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah. She was just happy with being pampered. Let's, let's go to verse 19. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, or of whom a woman is op uh, while they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, or of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So this truth can ensnare like a web if our heart is not right. So the liberty to get abroad and this liber women's liberation and feminism was created by the global elite, the Rothschilds. International bankers. The Bible says that the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. The 13 Illuminati families, which are Edomites, and more specifically, the small hats, Amalekites. Let's go to Sirach 25, verse. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. Give the water no passage, neither a wicked woman liberty to gad abroad. That's women's liberation. Feminism. Why you think Lady Liberty is called just that? Liberty. So she is liberated from the order and the will of the Heavenly Father. So it taps into the rebellion of Eve, going into witchcraft. Eve was the first witch. Close out here. Sirach 26. The book of Sirach, chapter 26. Verse 6 or 5. There be three things that my heart feareth, and for the fourth I was so afraid the slander of a city, the gathering together of an unruly multitude, and a false accusation. All of these are worse than death, but a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman and a scourge of the tongue which communicateth with all. An evil wife is a yoke shaken to and from. He that hath hold of her is as though he had held a scorpion, a drunken woman, and a gadder abroad causeth great anger and she will not cover her own shame. I remember walking in New York, New York City, and there was a parade of women with their breasts out. And they had painted themselves. And they had signs, my body, my choice. So the habitations of sin is bondage. There's no order. There's no standards. You got grandmas wearing coochie-cutting tights. 
You got 300-pound women wearing coochie-cutter tights. I got post-traumatic stress after seeing some of these sights. It's unbelievable. The Bible says that a woman is supposed to dress modestly. But in the land of Lady Liberty, the rules are off the table. There is no accountability. Now we have a national witch organization. And we have babies being unalive. 63.7 million babies have been unalive in America since 1973. And 20 million of which were by the so-called black woman, Eve. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Hashem. <laughs> All praises to Yahweh Hashem. Yahweh Shai, Hashem Rekonkadash. Barakatam. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala. And the five of the ball. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.